How's it everyone? Welcome back. This is the Mac Coast to Coast Show. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe so you know when we go live. Here's your host, Brian McLamara. Hey Mac Coasters, welcome again to another episode of your favorite show, the Mac Coast to Coast Show. This is a show where we discuss topics with strange people and fancy places. I'm here with my bros, my homeboys, my caballeros. We've got Razzle. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the show. I'm glad you guys are liking it and subscribing. We appreciate it. Things are going well. Thanks for tuning in. And T-Mac. What's up, guys? Happy New Year. First Mac Coast to Coast show in 2021. Let's do it. Wow, you know, you're right. It is the first Mac Coast to Coast show of the brand new year. On that note, I'm going to go ahead and give a shout out to our sponsors. Brotherhood 808 Clothing, where your friends are your chosen family. And did you know that video sells 65% more everything? Aren't you excited? I know I am. Get ready to showcase your brand at brandreadymedia.com. They'll help you out. And the Carving King, America's new revolutionary cutting board. Available now, special deal through the Mac Coast to Coast show. Only you, our Mac Coast to Coast viewers, get the Carving King and the other goodies on the Carving King website. Just click on the link below in the description and you'll get 10% off everything on the site. Only for you. We should pop open a bottle of bubbly. Have you guys got any bubbly? Sure, I, I just do. happen to have some right over here under the bed. <laughs> Not that kind of bubbly. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> hey, it was uh, worth a shot. <laughs> it was worth a shot. I've been waiting to use that one for a while. <laughs> That's good. I like that. <laughs> so what's going on, man? Uh, anything happened over the new year that we should be... Uh... Happy you should have seen this about? city, man. I uh, opened up my window New Year's Eve right at 12. Man, the whole city, all these illegal fireworks. It was nuts. <laughs> the city, no, they didn't have any, uh, you know, the government or the state didn't have any fireworks this year. So there was no need for them because everybody had them. It was insane. The whole sky was lit up. It was pretty good. It was good to watch from my house. How about you? Raz, what about you? Well, I got engaged. All right. Congratulations, Woo! brother. Proud of yep. you, bro. Yeah, What's we, his name? Uh... <laughs> Luis. Ah. Uh. Mm-hmm. Oh. All dark and handsome, just like I like him. I knew you. Tell, uh... tell us about it. Yeah, tell us how it, how it went down. Well, she and I had to work... Uh, Christmas and New Year's, so uh, we just got away to Reddington Beach over there, and uh, I had this whole elaborate thing planned for Christmas, and she told me she didn't want to uh, get engaged in 2020, so I was last minute scrambling for little gifts and stuff, and then uh, it wasn't as romantic as I wanted it to be, but it, it turned out good. Yeah, I saw the picture. That was cool, man. You guys on the beach in the sunset. That was nice. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, proposal, the proposal kept, uh, you know, having obstacles and barriers. And finally, I was like, you know what, babe? I love you. Will you marry me? I got on my knee, you know. So right. Good. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, T Mac, are you going to be the best man? Uh, hopefully. Yeah. Are we gonna yeah, do? Are we gonna do one of these? I haven't uh, heard when it is, or you know, any of that information yet. So hopefully, you know, all this COVID stuff will be a little mellowed out. We can travel and get together and you know celebrate together. Yeah, we were thinking about just eloping up to the mountains somewhere and getting married, and then maybe have a party later on with our family. Just keep it small. I mean, when you have a large wedding, it's just hard to make everybody happy and a lot of times by the time you know everything's done you're so stressed out that you know you kind of you need a vacation from your vacation 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah, that's cool. Something small would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have an epic party. Epic party, man. That's all I want. I don't That'll want anything the else. First time for you, right? <laughs> yeah. First time's a charm, they say. That's people what I are, heard. People are starting to wonder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brian, it must be getting kind of nuts up there in D.C., man, with all the stuff going on, huh? Yeah, it is. So, uh, yeah, the they're, they're protesters are rolling in. They say, don't go into town between Wednesday and Saturday. If you wow. know it's good for you. Wow. Wow, that's that's awesome. I mean, it's bad enough. I have to be I, <laughs> Don't go into town. I mean, I have to be straight up with you. It's bad to go in there anyway, regardless, during a normal day. Uh, right. But now with all that, they're closing streets down and all these strangers coming in and all these people uh Yeah, so my my good friend, he's going down there and he's a photographer. He's going to go down there and uh march with the people so i'm gonna see if he can get us some footage from that that'd be awesome yeah yeah maybe we could share it on the show next week or something i mean maybe i should go down there i don't know what do we think do we have a, do we do we want to vote on this do we think that i should go ahead and take it into my take, take go it down convertible there. down there and just open the top and just cruise through town just shotgun out <laughs> with your microphone set up like on your visor or something that's a great yeah. idea. I'm B Max from the Mac Coast to Coast show. How's it going? A big Mac Coast to Coast show flag hanging out the back. Yeah, probably love that. Oh yeah, actually, we, your Mac Coast to Coast correspondent. Yeah, you could put have like a sign that says, "Make America Mac Coast to Coast it." I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna take my assistant down there. We're gonna do it. We're gonna go for it. You heard it here on the Mac Coast to Coast show first, live and in effect. <laughs> We'll see what happens. <laughs> so what else is new, guys? Ah, oh, not much, man. We got a good guest today, Mike Covington. He's a cool dude. And uh, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, here in Hawaii, they legalized marijuana for uh, medical reasons. And, you know, what do you guys feel about the medical marijuana? Well, I got to tell you, I don't have a problem with it. In fact... I am thinking of constantly of new ways to and illnesses to use to get the, the marijuana. Well, I mean, if you you know if you got pain and you got chronic issues, chronic pain, you know, I don't see anything that's you know, good for you. Way I look at it, if you want to smoke pot, then go ahead. Hey, we got a special guest today, Mike Covington. He runs the Steep Hill Hawaii Marijuana Lab on King Street. Great guy. Welcome to the show, Mike. Great. What up, Mike? Well, great to be here, guys. <laughs> the, Happy the New Year, brother. I know and one I don't. <laughs> hustler. Yeah, I like that. I'm a hustler. That's, co- that's our cousin, Brian, Mike. Hey, how's it going, dad. Brian? Welcome to the Mac Coast Co. Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, where, where are you located right now, Mike? You out in Hawaii? Yeah, I'm, I'm at um, uh, Hawaii News Report headquarters. Uh you can see it's my TV's uh, updating over here, but uh, and we got HCC in the background here, which is uh, that's Dana's Hawaii HCC. Hawaii Cannabis Care. Hawaii Cannabis Care. That's where we do uh, CBD products, and uh, the laboratory. Yeah, we do a medical marijuana laboratory testing all the medical cannabis here in the state of Hawaii to make sure it passes all the regulations for contamination and potency and moisture and that sort of thing. And uh, so I'm basically involved in that, you know, this, this is my hustle, right? I got three hustles here in Hawaii, got the HCC, the lab, and then Hawaii News Report. I was trying to find a Hawaii News Report kind of uh, logo or anything. I couldn't get one in time, so. But uh, it's on Instagram, check it out, Hawaii News Report. It's uh, the latest and greatest news in Hawaii on uh, kind of more like a uh, independent journalist tip not any of that corporate media crap. Oh, okay. Maybe so you're, behind. are Maybe you actually doing the reporting or? Uh, no, no, I'm just behind the scenes. The, 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 uh, hand that makes everything work. The unseen hand, as they oh, like to say. You're the puppet master. <laughs> there you go. The puppet master. That sounds I have better a... than the unseen hand. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, I have another name for the unseen hand. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's not it 
<laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, um, so yeah, as far as the medical uh, marijuana goes, we just do the testing for the state. Uh, we don't sell it or anything. Um, uh, Hawaii Cannabis Care is just, like I said, CBD products. We, uh, you know, the tinctures, we got gummies. We were doing drinks until they shut us down out here in Hawaii, said, uh, I can't do drinks. So we stopped doing uh, drinks. Oh, really? Uh, we got some dog treats coming out here. Um, next week or so, we should be uh, doing that, some CBD dog treats. Okay. And, oh, wow. uh, you know, just, the, you know, everybody and their uncle's got a CBD company. So, you know, we're right there with them. Yeah, so I was going to say, um, you know, I was trying to explain to Raz what, you know, about your uh, Steep Hill Hawaii and how it's a franchise and it came out of California, I believe, right? And uh, how did that, how does that work? And uh, what, you know, how did that get you guys the upper hand on having a lab and everything in Hawaii? Really, the, the upper hand came just being the first to open, right? So uh, we, we signed an agreement with the uh, mainland company that was originally out of Berkeley, California. Uh, they licensed us some intellectual property to do some of the testing, um, do the initial setup of the laboratory. And so uh, we've been, uh, you know, contractually, we're kind of still with them. Um, but out here in Hawaii, it's, uh, it's more of a relationship uh, kind of business. So uh, we were the first ones to open up here and we probably do, you know, 80% of the testing in the state of Hawaii. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, because you were saying that you guys were one of the first ones, so you kind of, you know, deal with a lot of the uh, dispensaries and all that, right? Yep. So, yeah, the way it works here in Hawaii, it's a vertical process where they have a, a dispensary or producing company basically grows the product, uh, cures it, makes any manufactured products, and then they have to test it with us to pass um, the regulations that the state of Hawaii makes them pass, like I said, for contamination, different uh, chemicals that might be present that aren't supposed to, microbiological contamination, that sort of thing. And once it passes all the tests, then they can put it on their shelf uh, for sale. Um, in order to buy medical marijuana in the state of Hawaii, you have to have a, a medical marijuana card, it's called a 329 card. So you get that card and then you can buy a quarter ounce, no, not a quarter ounce, a quarter pound of weed every month. It's a lot of smoke. Wow. Yeah, it is. <laughs> a lot of smoke. <laughs> so, so do you guys test for potency as well? Yeah, we do potency. Um, we do terpenes, uh, you know, and then we do uh, how many uh, residual solvents are there, you know, like acetones, xylenes, uh, benzene, do things like that in there, especially for vape products, dabs. You guys know what dabs are, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've yeah. heard of it, yeah. I saw yeah, it in so, yeah. college one time. There you go. You did inhale, of course. <laughs> no, I didn't inhale. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was wondering, how, how do you link up with all these dispensaries? Do they call you, or do you guys, like, reach out to them, or how does that work? Yeah, the laboratories have to be uh, licensed and accredited here in Hawaii in order to test for the dispensary. So we have a um, yearly license that we have to renew um, with the Department of Health here in the state of Hawaii. And we also have to maintain our ISO accreditation, which is just an um, analytical laboratory standard for uh, record keeping and you know, paper trail, reproducibility, that sort of thing. And so in order to get those um, certifications, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit of work, a little bit of a hurdle to jump, and um, that's what prevents other people from coming into the business and testing. So right now, there's three labs in Hawaii that uh, meet those qualifications, and um, there was one went out of business, another one came in. It's, it's a small market, you know, limited um, kind of money available to any given lab, so it's, it's a little difficult. Um, we were just fortunate to be the first ones and develop those relationships with the dispensaries. And, uh, you know, once you develop a relationship, their, their product's passing, right? They're getting it on the shelf. They don't want to change and go with just some other lab and then have any problems. So that's kind of where we're at. As long as we uh, provide good, good uh, customer service and are attentive to their customers' needs, they seem to uh, be responsive. And you guys are expanding also, right? You said you're on the big island now and uh, yeah, what, Maui yeah, too? I, or? Yeah, well, the big island, I have a lab that's accredited and licensed there as well, trying to just uh, make it all about hemp on the big island so we can have like a uh, 
um, a kind of a laboratory headquarters for the hemp in the in the Hawaiian Islands, um, and then do all the medical marijuana and cannabis testing here in Honolulu. And so I'll be going over to the Big Island tomorrow to uh, do some more um, work on that lab. Uh, they've changed the regulations where now the USDA is going to be in charge of hemp. So I have to uh, jump through a bunch of hoops with the U.S. Department of Agriculture, as well as now I have to get a DEA license to wow. um, test hemp, right? And so I've always been, who wants to get involved with the feds, right? But uh, <laughs> if you want to play the game, right, you got to get your feet dirty. Yeah, you're right. Right. Dirty feet. Are, are they growing hemp in, <laughs> on the Big Island now, or is it legal to yeah, grow they're hemp? There? Every, they're growing hemp on all the islands, um, oh, okay. but it's you know the way it's set up now is they really don't have any processing facilities to uh, extract the CBD out of the flower and uh, you know make the other byproducts from the stem uh, and seeds. Um, but it's coming. You know the, they our our wonderful governor uh, vetoed the hemp bill last year because, you know, for no reason, it was going to open up the hemp market, make it easier for people to produce CBD and other cannabinoid byproducts of hemp. They vetoed that. So um, we're basically being governed by the 2018 hemp bill that went through the federal government, which is, um, you know, opens up the market, but it still has a lot of challenges like banking, you know, and, and being able to ship your product without having issues uh, being intercepted and, you um, you know, just dealing with the federal government. I know the uh, just the application fee in Florida. My friend told me was like a fifty thousand dollar non refundable application fee or something. Uh, to be a hemp producer, it might be. You know, I mean, you can you can process hemp in Florida pretty easily. Yeah, but to grow it to have a farm, you have to jump through some hoops for sure. Yeah. I know some guys up here in D.C., up in Maryland, that were uh, looking to uh, start growing marijuana, and they they were going to have to come up with like three hundred thousand dollars just for the application. It didn't guarantee that you were going to get anything, you know. So well, yeah, it was similar here in Hawaii when they first put out the um, the the applications to to start a dispensary. They had sixty six um, applicants, and they chose eight. And um, yeah, I think it was some ridiculous amount of money to, to even to apply. And then uh, you had to show you had this many million dollars in the bank and all that kind of stuff. And they claimed it was on the up and up and totally like, you know, nobody mm -hmm. was paid off. But um, most of the people that got the licenses out here in Hawaii weren't from Hawaii and they weren't associated with the cannabis industry. So it makes you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes you wonder how. How would you go about finding out about that type of corruption? You know, we watch a lot of TV. Like I've been watching this TV show, Billions, and it's like mm -hmm. everybody's corrupt, and there's a big circle of of people trying to get other yeah. people. And it's like you would think in today's day and age that you would be able to find a paper trail or transparency, or go up there and say, "Why did these guys get chosen?" You would think, but um, you know. <laughs> Check out Hawaii News Report on IG and you can see a lot of you know stupid things that politicians do. It makes you scratch your head why nobody's going, well, hey, maybe that's not yeah. right. You shouldn't yeah. do that. They just sweep it under the rug, right? Like I saw a thing on the news this morning because they have the big fireworks show here at the, at the, on New Year's. It was ridiculous the amount of fireworks people are shooting off here. And they interviewed a guy from... Uh, from that, that checks the um, containers coming out on the mats and ships. And he says that they check every container and they've never found a single firework. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> ever, ever. I'm like, who, who they were all, they were all yeah. homemade, I'm sure. Yeah, meanwhile, in Makiki, it looked like, damn, it was a war zone over there that yeah, night. Yeah, I know. It was, a, it was like better than, than the, the show. That they, Well, they didn't even put yeah. on a show here in Hawaii, but uh, yeah, it was a good show. Yeah. Just look at it. I thought like I was in the middle of a war or something, Middle East or something. <laughs> oh, it was crazy that night. I sent so, you that video. It was like, there's so much smoke rolling through there. It's like, oh, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was it was really a fireworks show. It was pretty amazing. Um, you, Hawaii News Report on Instagram has some some footage of it. If you guys check it out, you can see what went on. Yeah, definitely. I didn't even know you were involved with that. I'll check it out. Yeah, it, the Hustler. I'm a hustler, yo. Hustling, I know, you? man. Mike's hustling away. <laughs> and that, a... and that, that is located below the lab? 
because I know you guys yeah, are in the lab. Undisclosed, on the undi undisclosed, undisclosed secret location. bunker in oh. downtown Honolulu. All, All right. right. Well, okay. you almost need that nowadays, man. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You're we don't want anybody banging on the door and going, oh, I saw yeah. what you posted. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why we've been trying to stay, you know, in the middle here on the Mac Coast to Coast show. We don't want to have anybody uh, destroying Brian's business. <laughs> Just Brian pays all the bills, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's responsible. That's good. Yeah, he's gotta be. Uh, you know. <laughs> yeah, Tim, we'll see. Tim and I are like, eh, whatever. Come get what we got. There ain't much. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I just finally got something scratched together, something, and I'm afraid. I'm starting to be afraid to lose it. I, you know, there's nothing more powerful than having nothing to lose. You know. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start a whole new business. I don't care. I had a boss tell me, he goes, you can't quit. I'm like, I'm out of here, dude. I'm gone. I had a bunch of bosses tell me that. Yeah. Well, I had a bunch of bosses <laughs> tell me I was fired. They didn't say you couldn't quit. Uh, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, like in the future of the, of the steep hill and everything, like in your what you're doing with the lab and all that, what what's it looking like? What's I mean, I know you guys... I've been waiting for the uh, recreational marijuana and, and and what what's yeah. going on with that and, and and what's the future looking like for you guys? Well, here in Hawaii, I don't think they'll do anything anytime soon, right? The governor is in for another year or so, and his wife uh, is involved with um, childhood education and is a totally anti-cannabis, anti anything to do with weed. So yeah. we have to wait or hope that the uh, it gets passed on the federal level with our new uh, administration, new Congress. But, you know, I have very little faith in our elected officials. But, hey, you know, if, if they can pull it off and, and pass uh, and legalize uh, recreational cannabis nationwide, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be, uh, be freaking gangbusters over here. And, well, I mean, it's you know. about time, man. I mean, they've been demonizing marijuana for so many years. And... And the truth is, I mean, alcohol is a lot worse for you and a lot worse on, uh, you know, fatalities, all kinds of stuff. Basically, the marijuana yeah. smokers are just going to sit at home on the couch and eat a bag of chips and watch TV and chill, you know, whereas alcohol, people are out, you know. I got to you know tell you, know. man, if it's too late to get into the alcohol uh I mean, not the alcohol, the, the uh, pots, <laughs> the, the cannabis uh, market, as far as stocks are concerned, go Doritos, go Cheetos, Doritos, seriously. Frito-Lay. <laughs> Frito-Lay, brother. Frito-Lay. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I have people ask me often, you know, about investing in cannabis stocks and this and that. And um, I'm always tell, I always tell them to be very hesitant just because... Um, a lot of times the people that uh, come up with these cannabis companies, it's it's just all on paper. You know, they inflate it, inflate it, sell a bunch of stocks, and then uh, take the money and run. It's kind of hard to uh, get a legit business that people are actually trying to uh, make a long-term business go. Like most of these guys, they just, you know, hype it up, sell it, run away at the money, nothing ever happens. Um, you know, we've seen it out here in Hawaii with... Uh, some of the laboratories come into town, you know, act like it's a big game, but there's just it's it, they don't have they don't even have the instrumentation to 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 get where they need to get. Same with the CBD game, people come out here, they're going to be the next CBD wonder, sell millions of dollars everywhere, and uh, you know it, it it's just like anything, any business. I mean, it takes a lot of time and dedication and hard work and being broke for a few years, and a lot of people just aren't ready to to make that sacrifice. Right. Yeah. And I'm and I know that you were like, you know, went to you were like Valor Victorian in my high school and then you you know, Dana caused you up to, you know, help him with the stuff with the lab and I know you've put a lot yeah. of hard work into it, you know. Well that's what people ask me, is like, how'd you get into it? And I'm like, I just stumbled right into it. You know, I was uh, it had nothing to do with cannabis four years ago. And I was uh I was tell I tell people I was sitting in, in Melbourne Beach watching a surf contest at Holly Eva. And I got all stoked and psyched up. And I'm like, I'm buying a ticket right now. I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> and so I, I right there, I bought a ticket. Oh, I'm going to surf. And then when I was out here during that surf trip, that's when I was approached. So, hey, you want to start a cannabis lab? And, I, you know, I was like, oh, you know, okay, sounds, sounds like a good idea. And I get to surf all the time. 
And um, that's basically the way it started, right? Totally just in the right place at the right time kind of thing. Other yeah, than that, Mike, you know, I was just, I was doing my dirt thing, pushing dirt, digging dirt. Mike is a true coast coaster for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Flying to Florida and Hawaii and oh still, yeah, still going on the yeah, max I'm, a lot. I'm looking, I'm looking for COVID wherever I can find it. <laughs> mm, yeah. COVID. Hey, that's a great <laughs> idea for a new looking, show. COVID hunters. COVID? COVID, COVID hunters. hunters. COVID well, hey, I, I'll tell you what. I was in Utah last week. Should have did your scary uh, movie part. Sorry. Two people. Two people I was around caught COVID while I was in Utah. Oh. Wow. Or they had yeah. it already. They were Either just way, I didn't catch it. it, it they were really mild symptoms they had. You know, basically a little cough in, maybe a little, little tired. When got well, tested, I mean, I've been, I've been awesome. working at the hospital since March all around it, and knock on mm -hmm. wood, I haven't, but I mean, I don't know. Well, Searching I mean, yeah. for COVID. Who knows? I mean, have you been tested yet? I mean, who knows? I mean, I worked in the hotel, too, you know, I mean, around well, I, get, I travel coming. so much, I'm tested like crazy. I mean, I got tested yesterday, right? And then mm -hmm. I was tested on Tuesday, and then, and then yeah, yeah, test, you test, told test. Me, like, with the traveling, you're constantly taking it you know been tested right, right with the traveling and then you know the companies that i have here in hawaii if i come if i bring back covid and i give it to everybody then the, everybody shuts down and then you know no more hustle no, no more <laughs> <laughs> hustle's over and what about your business you have here in florida what what do you do with that so yeah i'm a um a general contractor i have a commercial construction company in florida uh, but i do strictly a 99% heavy equipment dirt work, basically uh, building dirt roads, digging ditches, filling in ditches, uh, you know. Swift mud, like swift mud contracts or something? Swift muds, uh, Florida Wildlife and Fish, um, Department of Environmental Protection. I'll do some local municipalities as well. I just did a big um, Thing. We restored some wetlands and duet preserve over by uh, Lake Manatee as the headwaters for uh, the Manatee River, um, which was basically just filling in a bunch of ditches that were dug back in the 30s and 40s to drain the wetland. They're just restoring it to try to improve the water quality going into the upper uh, Manatee River. So it was beautiful. I mean, a beautiful job, nice and fun. You're out, out in the woods, heavy equipment, you know. Wow. Every day he's hustling, hustling, hustling. I mean, you really are, man. Like, uh, you know, some people they like to say they're a hustler. You know, they get that they want to get that paper. You know, but uh, that's right. They're not all about like what it takes to not you know to get there. And uh, the fact that you have three businesses that you got your hands in, I applaud you. You're yeah, like Mike. Four. you're like the exactly center fold of hustler. <laughs> four business, four of them. <laughs> Well, I, you know what it is, is, is I realized, you know, it's been about 10 years ago that in order to um, live the lifestyle I'm accustomed to, which is like surfing a lot and traveling a lot, that I had to have multiple revenue streams, that just one wasn't enough. And so um, I'm getting to the point now where I, I need a personal assistant because four is too many. And that's where I come into play when I'm driving you guys <laughs> rap, rap steep hill far around Honolulu going, what's up, buddy? Yeah. I, 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 know, I know a guy looking for a job over there. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. <Yeah>. Mr. Furlough. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Furlow. Tim, Tim's, Tim's employed by the surf tories. Hey, and, uh, uh, and, and uh, Uncle Trump just signed that other one, so you know. <laughs> you know yeah, Papa Trump oh, gave you some more money. Yeah, he broke him off some more change. You know, I, I have this saying, uh, Mike, and uh, I tell it to people all the time. And I, and I say there's two types of people out there. There's people that wait for things to happen to them. And there's people that do what they want to do. And you're clearly one of those people that does what they want to do. You know? Yeah, I try to. As much um, as possible, Mike's, you know? Mike's living the dream, brother. He's surfing every day. He's going to Max. He's going to Florida. He's... He's on it. Tim, you know? Tim hadn't seen my new condo either. He, he's going to, you know. Yeah. I, well, you, I, I drove by it and saw it, and I was like, oh, <laughs> what, a, what a location. I totally yeah. stumbled into it. It wasn't like a money thing. It was just a he's stumble. He's like right thing. on the beach in Waikiki now. He's living the dream. <laughs> wow. 
For real? Like I see, yeah. I see the bait nice. fish kind of get excited, and the the papillas start, you know, hitting them, and I go grab my fishing pole right now and go fishing. That's how close I am. <laughs> That's wow. awesome. Yeah, it's like a bucket list. I caught like some papillo out of the, the Cohio freaking tide pools there, right there in Waikiki. Because yeah, there's speak, no tourists. You got to speak English for our, our Howley uh, guests. <laughs> like a jack. It looks like a little jack. You know? Okay. And, they, all and right. there's all these bait fish, and they have these little swimming areas for the tourists, right? But the tourists aren't here. And so the bait fish have moved in. And uh, uh, nature's and taking back out over. Fishing. Well, the water's super clean in Waikiki, too, you know, because there's springs. <laughs> Supposedly there's springs, right? That's what Waikiki stands for. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, uh, it's really nice. Um, it's, you know, and I go swimming in the morning. I'm the only guy in the whole swimming tide pool area. It's ridiculous. Wow. I was going to say, he's fishing one minute. He's grabbing his longboard. He's running across <laughs> the street. He's, then he's driving the diamond head. He's checking the surf, calling me up, hitting me up. So, yeah, man, it's... Uh, I love what you're doing, Mike, man. You got a good thing going on, bro. And, uh, you know, like I always said, I hope one day I'll be a part of it. <laughs> well, you, you know what I want to do is get a foil, and then I want to get dropped off and then ride the tra trade wind swell back into Waikiki. There you uh, go. I thought yeah. you were saying, going to say back to Florida. <laughs> be awesome. <laughs> foil board back to Florida. A foil to Florida. <laughs> I want to get one in Florida, too, for those weak-ass waves. Three days later. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> going through the panama canal <laughs> hey so so raz i've seen you've been out hunting you get it having any luck yeah i killed a couple nice ones uh i don't pull the trigger unless they're a nice big buck or if somebody needs some meat then occasionally i'll shoot a, a doe or something but i just enjoy hey, getting out the there young ones the little young ones with the tender meat <laughs> No, I hit those with my Are we car. still talking about are we still talking about hunting here, boys? What's going on? <laughs> that, that, that scene yeah. again. Well, I've hit, I've hit two with my car in the past <laughs> four or five years, so the little ones seems like I like to uh hit those with my truck on the way up there for some reason. Brutal. Okay, right on. Mm, and yeah. you just deer? Just just shooting deer? Yeah, yeah. He's Honestly, got a nice just, piece of land up there now. He's got a little spot. Yeah. Oh, that's on your piece of property? I see those pictures. Well, I did have a, a lease, like 335 acres in a house up in Alabama, but I just bought six and a half acres up in North Florida. It's got a little cabin on it, but I'm working on it. It's different yeah. when it's yours, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I, I bought like $200 worth of just mineral and seeds to plant up there. Just, just trying to provide a good place for... If somebody wants to just come up there and you know, sit in the woods and see a deer. They can do that, you know, but yeah. It's 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 a nice uh, turn the cell phone off and sit up there and chill out and enjoy nature. Oh, it's nice. Dig it. I thought about going to West Virginia and buying a cabin. I started looking at cabins up in West Virginia and I was like, I want to get 20 acres up there and like, you know, I don't know what I would do with it all because, you know, the reality is <laughs> I'm super lazy. I don't want to do any work. I don't want to. I mean, I do video work and I do stuff like that. So I'm like, you know, I'm a business person and I'm constantly doing business, but I don't want to do. I don't want to go out there with like tractors and, you know, pull out trees and build berms. and. Well, then don't buy land. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, you, That's you might all be you surprised. You, you might like it after you start doing it, you know. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I mean that's part of hunting for me, you know, just the camaraderie with the other guys, you know, we're we're planting fields and making trails to the woods. I mean, I, I like that kind of thing. I, I mean, Tim and I grew up doing that, you know, uh, in Country Florida. Boys, planting fe planting fields. Yes. Well, would... <laughs> Shit, we lived in the woods when we were growing up. That's all we did. <laughs> so, yeah. what kind of crazy stories did you guys have as kids, like? I'll give you an example. So when we were kids, there was a creek behind the house and we would like follow this creek and like there was like all these stolen bikes down there. We would like take all the parts apart and like start building custom bikes out of parts, like doing all this crazy stuff when you're a kid. What kind of stuff did you guys used to do? Shit, me and Mike, well, we were in, what well, we've known each other since elementary, I guess, pretty much. And, uh, you know, we, 
we always did cool stuff back in the day, man. I mean, me and Raz lived, I mean, we basically had George Hoffs across the street from our house. We had horses and four wheelers and trampoline pools. I mean, we did all kind of cool stuff, but you know, Mike, you know, Mike was always a good friend of mine. And, uh, I didn't really, you know, when we, we played soccer, did we play soccer together, Mike? I think we did, right? Yeah, maybe. I, I think, think it was we, more like we're... in junior high where we started surfing and skating, you know? Yeah, I think that's when we became closer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, as, as for me as a child, I mean, we used to do the, you know, like make pipe bombs, you know, and then sh shoot frogs up in toy rockets and do all kinds of crazy stuff like that. And you, you can't even do a pipe bomb nowadays, though, so they're in Gitmo. Yeah, I mean, that is crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, my, I, I that was that was Brian's thing to do with his brother, I think, too, right? Yeah, yeah we was... had we had those model rockets. We put frogs up in them and then, like <laughs> throw, launch them up in the air. And yeah, it was like, what's the next thing we're gonna do? Like, let's. <laughs> Well, we, we would take the rockets and actually tie the parachute to the frog. So after it goes up, you know, and it, and it, and it shoots out the parachute and see if, see if our little frog would, would make it. And he usually didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're a nicer guy than us. We were like, you know, we're like, take the parachute out of there. We could get another frog in there if we, we make enough room. There you go. Uh, Tim, you... What... Go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to say, one time we, uh... well, hold on. <laughs> one time we took a frog and we put it in a little lego box and then we put it in the freezer and froze him solid <laughs> frozen frog legs next week on the mac coast to coast show <laughs> no i remember i remember i did that and i was like i took him out and he was a perfect he was perfectly the way he was normal like you know when i put him in there and then slowly as he thought he was like <laughs> I used to have a iguana in my bathroom closet up in Tallahassee and I was showing somebody one night we were having a party and I slammed the door and his head got in there. Oh, oh no. And he was all oh, no. <laughs> So I had to put him in the freezer. I guess it just uh, slow, slows down their heart rate until they, you know, expire. But uh, Well, hey, iguana's it was a sad day. Could have ate him. Yeah, well, yeah was that time big. I'm down. I'm down with Mike and Max. He takes me down there for three months. <laughs> and uh, and uh, what was her name? I forgot her Olga. name. Uh, Olga. 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 I like, hey, I, I walk over. I'm like, and I only knew like a couple words. And Max, I'm like, oh no, Pachuga, po favor. That's all yeah, I knew how to say. That's what I knew, Pachuga. <laughs> and then she's over there, and I look in her hand. She's got this iguana like laid up on the hot rock thing that she cooks on, and he's just he's alive, and she's just burning it, <laughs> burning the skin off. Yeah, she's so burning the skin off, the top skin, and, outside layer off. Yeah, and then she's like, "Would you like some soup?" And I'm like, you know, and I'm like, Ugh! and Mike's Mike's loving it, dude. He's like, ooh, but some fresh <laughs> iguana soup with some. With some, uh, and you're while you're eating, you look over and there's like pigs rolling right there in mud, shitting all over themselves. <laughs> Tastes mm. like chicken. Oh, man. Man. It's, mm. it's good on the, mm -hmm. on the old stomach, boy. I'll tell you, you, eat a big old piece of that chicken, boy, and go home and just. <laughs> wow, all what right. a great trip. What a great story. Oh, man. Yeah. Lost, he lost a I, lot of weight. I lost like 100 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Tim came yeah. back. He looked like he came Holy back from concentration camp or something. Yeah, I definitely looked concentration-ish. Oh, sure, dude. My, oh, my jawline is all sucked in. <laughs> Weighed about 80 pounds, probably. 6'1", wow. 80 pounds. Has somebody got the... Mexico. It's Our next sponsor is Mexico. Learn, lose weight now. Yeah, Mike, yeah, Mike took me on. And I was like, I was going for like a month and, I, and then... I was like, should I go longer? I'm gonna go for two months. Nah, three months. So I went for three months. <laughs> Seven days, to get home. Days, but no toilet. <laughs> I was telling somebody that story, you know, because uh, when I first got over there, Tim left, and I was, you know, trying to learn pigeon from the Hawaiians and everything. But we were talking about uh, when Tim got on the plane, we had packed a big old can of acetone and some surfboard resin and all this stuff 
<laughs> yeah. nowadays, nowadays they wouldn't let you fly with all that, but uh, it was like highly explosive materials. <laughs> yeah, I had it all in my board bag with my three boards, and they were like, yeah, come on on, dude. I was yeah. like, yeah, I think, like you said, nowadays I would never fly. Yeah, Mike comes pulling up in a convertible seven. or a freaking big old long Oldsmobile or what was that? Yeah, what I think that was an old Oldsmobile. I can't remember that big red one, the convertible. Yeah, and then on the uh, on the license plate, the registration said like five years it was expired. <laughs> We're still running yeah. it. It was classic. One road in, one road out. Great times, Mike. I'm glad you you know introduced me to that trip. That was one of the all time trips of my life. Yeah, well, it makes hey, you, you wonder. still go back. Nobody's down there surfing. It's empty surf. I know. I need to make it. Yeah, it might get your head cut off though by the cartel, but besides that, <laughs> I mean, if you can get any time, if you can get any time off, you know. <laughs> yeah. Decapitation. Yeah. You know, iguana. Pig <laughs> shit. Yeah. Everywhere. It sounds wonderful. Yeah, I didn't really think about all that while I was down there because I was clueless, right? And then one day we were talking to this guy, I uh, forget what his name was, Tony's uncle or whatever, and he starts telling me these stories, these horror stories of the, the you know, the gangsters and shit. And I'm like, the banditos. Oh. The banditos, yeah. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I was lucky I got out of there without getting in trouble. <laughs> yeah, but good times and, uh, Mike, living yeah. the dream, brother. Good well, to have you, you on what, the Mexico been, Coast show. Bro. I haven't been there like five years to Mexico just because um, it's you know it's difficult. It's like camping with electricity, you know. So you you get older, you uh, it's like I think I'm just going to go to the place where it's nice and easy, right? I feel you on that. Yeah. Tell me about it. That's my middle name, baby. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy. B Max, easy Mac, easy, easy Mac. Mac. Yeah, that's you oh, now. There you go. That's your new name. It's my new name. Easy, man. Yeah, well, Mike, thanks for coming on the show, man, and catching up with you. And uh, good luck with your with the lab and everything you got going on. I hope it works out for right you. On. Well, hey, like I said, check out Hawaii News Report on Instagram. You guys want to get some uh, kind of local Hawaiian flavor. And uh, HCC in the background, some uh, some cannabis products, our CBD, not really THC. Not, all our products have zero THC, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you can always reach out to uh, one of these Mac guys if you want to get a hold of me and get some products or whatever you want. Right on. Thanks, Mike. Fantastic. Right. And now, that ends another episode of Mac Coast to Coast. <laughs> Until next time, wash your drawers. <laughs> and, and your hands. Why do you think it always be about the hands? Well, if you're going to wash the drawers, you might as well wash the hands as well. It's always about the hands.